Perfect. Good afternoon, Facebook. We're live here with Gina Klaus Vilmar. And Gina is working with refugees to help them find a way. And Gina, you found your way to this studio right here. What brought you to Concordia? Well, Grant, I work with an organization called Upwardly Global. And we work with refugees and immigrants who come to the United States, who are work authorized, who bring skills and talent, but don't have the opportunities to earn an income. So we help basically refugees and immigrants get jobs. Um, yeah. And, and why is that so important? I mean, these people are coming to a new country because they're fleeing war, crime, just un, un okay environments. You know, how, how are you spreading this message and what are you doing to make an impact in their lives? Yeah, I mean, I think people come here for two reasons. One is to seek safety and the second one is opportunity. Okay. Um, and what we do is we make the, the case for why refugees are good for business. Um, they're good for our economy, they're good for our communities, and they're good for our workplaces. Absolutely. So we have, so if you look at the data, it shows that on average, refugees in the past 10 years have given a net fiscal benefit of $63 billion. Wow. So they're paying, they're working, they're paying taxes, and they're actually a benefit to our economy. We also know that when you look at employers and they have diverse workplaces, 35% have a better chance of doing uh, be better business on the bottom line. So we know that a diverse workplace is important. Right. And we know that refugees are contributing to our economy. So what we do usually say is that they're talent rich, but they're opportunity poor. Okay. So at Upwardly Global, we basically work with corporations to understand how do you change your hiring practice? How do you look at workforce development differently to actually see this talent pool right. as a talent option for talent shortages in businesses? So we do actually work a lot with STEM in the STEM sector. Okay. We work a lot with IT. We work a lot with engineering. Um, and big we work, area for them to come in and make improvement, right? Well, I mean, you know, there are, you know, we work with big for-profit 500, uh, Fortune 500 companies. We also work with medium and small companies. And what we're hearing is that 43% of them say they have hard-to-fill roles. And at the same time, we have a talent group that is overlooked. And what I often tell people is that refugees can't just plug and play. They can't just apply for a job and get that job immediately. Right. Um, they've got sometimes language barriers. Oftentimes they speak English fluently, but they don't speak professional English. Um, and so there's also industry English. Um, they, the job search is very different in different parts of the world. Um, in the United States, we're very confident, we're very optimistic. We talk a lot about the I and not the we. Right. Um, and so those are important things to translate. But the last thing is, is they often don't come with a professional Network, right? Like they come here with no family, with very limited family. Um, they don't have a network of people. And if you think about how you got your job, most likely you had help in your professional network. And that's the same with everybody else. And refugees don't have that. So it's about helping them build that professional network up again, too. Well, there's so many factors that go into that other interesting network, right? You said language barrier was one of them. At least one of my best friend's parents came from uh, Baghdad. And uh, they didn't accept his degree, I believe it was. So just little things like that, that it sounds like upward global or upwardly is, is making improvement on. Yes. Um, so what are some other obstacles that these refugees might run into? And, and why Concordia? What, what minds are coming together to solve these problems? So I think the great thing about Concordia is it's the intersection between business and policy on big issues. And what we see from the business side is, is that we know corporations are really stepping into the game and sort of saying, we want to be true to our mission, we want to be true to our identity, and we want to be true to what our, um, our, our customers care about. Um, and so we've got a partnership, for example, with Accenture. Um, we've got partnerships with Solergo. We've got partnership with Starbucks. We're really stepping into this space and sort of saying, how do we be true and authentic to that? And one piece is not only by donating and contributing to these causes, which are critically important. The other piece is, is how do you actually hire refugees in your business, and how do you really promote real diversity and real equity? Right. And so Upwardly Global is part of the solution to that. We sort of help those conversations. Definitely. And that really starts with HR. That starts with how do you recruit? Um, and then how do you help that talent once it's in your company so that they're growing? And so I think for us, being in a space where we have corporations in the play, this space is really critically important. Yep. The other side is policy, right? 
workforce development policy is set up not really to look at talent pools that are outside of the normal, you got your high school education, now let's see what specialized in, um, degrees that you need in order to do this entry level job. So how do you get policy to change to really say refugees bring talent, refugees have skills, and they are actually contributing and can contribute to our workforce. And how do we actually build a policy system around that so that they can they can plug and play? Well, Gina, we're glad you're here. Unfortunately, you have to be here, and this is a problem. Um, what is one thing that you would tell the Facebook Live viewers, or maybe some business owners that might be watching this, uh, what was one piece of advice that you would give to them? I mean, I guess one big piece of advice is that we need to shift the narrative um, around refugees being dependent and shift it towards the fact that they have skills and talent and that they're hardworking and that they're coming here not only for safety, but they're also coming here for opportunity. And so how do we create an environment that allows that to happen? Well, Gina, let's create that environment. Thanks for coming on Great. to Concordia. Thanks so much, Grant. Appreciate your time. Thanks. All right.